all right it's a time to start our first day of the session our resource person has joined we welcome you sir on the behalf of whole babu banarsi das group it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the one week fdp on innovative approaches in engineering technology and management teaching organized by department of management babu banarsi das institute of technology and management lucknow uttar pradesh i hope that you are going to enjoy so many things with this fdp i sincerely hope you will enjoy today and the next five day of this learning i extend to you all our warmest welcome especially to those who have joined us from different states of india and abroad it is our privilege and honor to welcome our key resource person dr tapash k chatterji sir from imt nagpur we also welcome our chief patron patrons advisory individual and volunteer without their kindness we would not be able to create a total environment of the participation thank you all for your presence and participation with this i would like to request our hod sir Dr. Mani Singh, kindly give a brief intro and welcome our guest and speaker. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sivangi. Uh, just I am welcoming to a uh, resource person, uh, Dr. Bhavesh Kumar Chauhan, sir, and our uh, speaker, sir, Dr. Tapas Kumar Chitadi from IMT Nagpur, and all the participants for this FDP. Name innovative approaches in engineering, technology, and management teaching, and especially this FDP is designed to train and develop teaching professionals, academicians, researchers towards the innovative teaching method, blended learning with reference to the national education policy in consideration. And I wish to extend my deep appreciation to the management of the BDP group. for supporting the efforts to further develop new skills among the faculty members and the researchers i give special uh, thanks to all the speakers to be present in upcoming days of this fdp i i am delighted to welcome all the participants uh, they are present today for the fdp and upcoming days and further i am uh, welcoming again to dr tapas kumar chatterjee sir and uh, he has given his precious time and uh, for this fdp and today he is going to discuss the important topic uh, innovative approaches to teaching and imperative thank you thank you so much hod sir with this i would like to request our honorable and beloved dr bhavesh kumar chauhan sir director bbd itm sir over to you please give a brief info about the fdp and welcome our resource person of the day director sir over to you yeah thank you dr shivangi uh, convener of this program uh, i on behalf of uh, our honorable chair person shrimati alka das and uh, as well as our president of bpd education group mr viras sagar das all the faculty members and uh, staff members of bpd education group uh, welcome the esteemed speaker uh, professor tapas kumar chatterjee uh, who has uh, held different positions means uh, starting from gm and then you know ceo and you know in the industry as well as in academics so he has he is an alumni of national nayu university jodhpur and so he has a very diverse spectrum i really congratulate organization the organizers to really start with the first speaker who is so inspiring and has uh, such a diverse profile so there could not be better way than to start this way and as i see that uh, the uh, participant and delegates whom i also welcome uh, on behalf of the management as well as all other stakeholders of bbd education group uh, that they are from the different states and also as uh, convener rightly pointed out even from other countries so that speaks uh, for the uh, success of the program so uh, i congratulate this dynamic and versatile department of management who has been arranging and you know coordinating different ftp in past and uh, uh, i really uh, uh, i will be failing in my duty if do I, i do not really appreciate your previous efforts uh, along with professor priyanka singh 
the way you organize uh, the FDPs with the Ministry of Education and other esteemed organizations in collaboration. So uh, I, I congratulate uh, to HOD of the department, uh, uh, Dr. Mani Singh, as well as department in charge, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Vinay Kumar Yadav and all other dynamic and versatile faculty members who have always stood for the challenge and they have been really working exemplary. So uh, uh, kudos and appreciation to the whole team. And I, I also see a very healthy uh, relationship because I see that if I talk about civil engineering department, Professor D.S. Ray, the DI of the department, Professor Dr. Vartika and other faculty members of civil, they are also really keen to really take on these management, you know, innovative practices. So there is a spectrum of, and I see other department HODs and of course, uh, in majority of the cases, they are from other speakers. So I'm really looking forward for the session and seeing the profile of Professor uh, Tapas Kumar Chatterjee, who is an, uh, really exemplary as well as inspirational. And I'm sure this session would be quite fruitful to all the delegates. So uh, thank you, delegate, for having opted this. And I'm sure it will be an enriching experience for you, which will uh, benefit you both professionally as well as personally. Thank you very much. And over to the coordinator of the programs, Dr. Shivangi Tiwari. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your kind and inspirational words. With this, I would like to request Mansi Mohanan to give a brief introduction about the resource person of the day, as well brief info about the FDP. Mansi, over to you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you. I am Mansi Mohanan from Department of Management, BBD ITM. Cordially welcome you all to day one of the one week international faculty development program on the topic, innovative approaches in engineering technology and management teaching organized by the Department of Management, Babu Banarasi Das, National Institute of Technology and Management, Lucknow. This program has been organized under the cooperation and guidance of chief patron, Mrs. Alka Das Gupta, ma'am, chairperson, BBD Group of Education, and Sri Viraj Sagar Das, sir, president, BBD Group of Education, the patron of this program, Professor Dr. Bhavesh Kumar Chauhan, sir, director, BBD ITM Lucknow. The advisory of this program is Professor Dr. Manish Singh, sir, HOD Department of Management, BBD ITM Lucknow. The organizing secretary, Dr. Shivangi Tiwari, ma'am, assistant professor, Department of Management, BBD ITM Lucknow. And the student coordinators are Aditi Amit, Mansi Mohanan, Mitali Keshavani, Ashna, Nimish Gupta, and Ritik Gupta. Well, it feels immense pleasure in introducing our honorable speaker, Professor Dr. Tapas Kumar Chatterjee, sir. He is currently working as an associate professor marketing with Institute of Management Technology at Nagpur. Dr. Chatterjee holds a PhD in management from National Law University, Jodhpur. He has more than two decades of experience of working with corporate holding positions like regional manager, general manager, and CEO. From last 14 years, he has been in academics and has taught in institutes like ICFAI, Business School, KIIT School of Management, and Xavier Institute of Management, Bhuvaneshwar, before joining IMT Nagpur in 2011. He has published several research articles in international journals of repute and has presented several papers in national and international conferences. Dr. Chatterjee has also authored one book. He was given the Best Teacher in Marketing Management Award by Lokmat National Education Leadership in 2015 for his contribution in the field of management education. Sir, we are honored and so blessed to welcome you on the faculty development program. And I would request you to please proceed with the session. Over to you, sir. Sir, you are not audible. Professor Chatterjee, sir, you are not audible.
organized by Babu Banarsi Das Institute of Technology and Management at now. At the very outset, uh, I would uh, like to express my thanks and gratitude to Dr. Mrs. Alka to just hold on, please. My sincere thanks and gratitude to Mrs. Alka Das Gupta Ji, Honorable Chairperson of BBD Group of Education, Sri Viraj Sagar Das Ji, President BBD Group of Education, Professor Dr. Bhavesh Kumar Chauhan, who is Honorable Director of BBD ITM Lucknow, Advisory Dr. J. Advisory Dr. J. Manish Singh, who is head of the Department of Management, the Department of Management, BBDITM Lucknow. And last, but not the least at all, my sincere thanks and gratitude uh, goes to Dr. Shivangi Tiwari, because uh, she, is, uh, she is the one who had been coordinating with me all along for last uh, four or five days time now, ever since I've got the invitation of this esteemed program. So my sincere and warm thanks and regards go to Dr. Shivangi as well. So let me just also, you know, uh, let me have the privilege of welcoming all the participants of the, of the event this prestigious one day international FDP. Uh, my esteemed faculty colleagues, the research scholars from different esteemed institutes, all the corporate uh, you know, research scholars, industrial research scholars, all the student students who are uh, who could be part of the audience and uh, one and all, you know. Uh, some of uh, my IMT students are also there, must be in the audience. And some of my faculty colleagues and staff members have also joined to, you know, watch the event. So I welcome you all to this uh, event. And I'm sure in the end of this week, you all will go duly enriched because uh, the very topic, innovative approaches in engineering technology and uh, management teaching is very, very, I mean, I should say extremely relevant in the present context. The reason being the word innovation is an in thing today. In all spheres of life, innovation is there. And uh, this is the only way forward for the whole world. I would uh, request Shivangi, ma'am, to please uh, move forward. Uh, yes, sir. Please. Uh, so topic of my talk will be innovative approaches to teaching an imperative, an imperative, because I told you this innovation is an in thing today. So please go back. Please go back. Another slide here. No, just just one one slide ahead. Yes, thank you. So uh, let me have a brief introduction to this August audience here. Uh, I am Dr. T.K. Chatterjee, as uh, you know, uh, very uh, illustriously <laughs> introduced by Manasi Mohan, Mohanan, Manasi Mohanan, the student of uh, BBDITM. So uh, my brief introduction is, uh, well, I have an MBA degree and uh, followed by a PhD in management from National Law University, Jodhpur. But uh, I'm not a career academician in the sense that I spent my initial uh, more than two decades of my career in industry. I'm an ex-corporate guy and I have uh, 
worked for different companies, you know, different companies selling what not, selling uh, typewriters, manual typewriters, which the current generation can only see in museums. Then I sold automotive batteries, then industrial products, air conditioners, water coolers with Sriram Refrigeration Industries. I also dealt in some industrial, uh, you know, products with Hindustan Composites. And I have also spent a good part of my career in automobile industry as a C general manager and CEO and all. And uh, some 14 years back, it was by the stroke of luck, I should say, I came to academics. Stroke of luck, why? Because uh, one professor from Kids School of Management approached me. He had bought a vehicle from me, uh, Scorpio. And he invited me, he proposed that uh, I should be, I should uh, teach strategic market ma marketing management course to the students of the Kids School of Management. And I laughed away. I said, how can I do that? I am a, uh, in the, I am totally out of touch with books and academics and all. He said, no, no, you can do it. And he insisted. And since timings were flexible, it was late evening classes. So I reluctantly agreed and uh, agreed to teach that course. But you know, that is why I called it a stroke of luck. I found that very interesting. I fell in love with the students and students fell in love with me. At the, I should call it a love at first sight. And that changed my whole life. I started looking for a you know, full-fledged uh, career in academics. And uh, then I worked for IFI Business School. I worked for Kid School also in uh, Bhubaneswar, Kid School of Management. I had been teaching in XIM Bhubaneswar and for last about 10 years now. Tomorrow I'll be completing my 10 years with Institute of Management Technology at now as an associate professor in marketing. In, be, in between, I had also handled the position of chairperson placements and all. And I finished my PhD also while working uh, for IMTW with National Law Institute. So that is a uh, brief about uh, my career so far, my career, my journey. So I would, uh, please ma'am, just uh, move forward to the next slide. Yeah. Let me briefly also uh, introduce you to our institute, Institute of Management Technology in Nagpur, where I've been working for so many years now. Uh, these are some of the glimpses that I captured from my uh, you know, photo gallery, you can say, or whatever you call it. I'm quite fond of uh, getting photographed. This is my, you should say, I'm very passionate about getting photographed. Somebody takes my photograph, I feel very happy in the seventh sky. So I've got a huge collection of photographs. So this is the IMT Institute of Management Technology. Nagpur is part of IMT group of institutions. Having its flagship campus, uh, flagship campus in, just let me see if you can hear, then I will stop holding the mic. So please tell me. Am I still audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are. Yes, that, that's better. Now my hands are free, you know. So IMT group of institutions, uh, we have our flagship campus in uh, Gaziabad, IMT Gaziabad, which is very old and the oldest campus of IMT group of institutions. Then uh, we have uh, our second campus in IMT Nagpur. Then, uh, IMT Dubai, we have a campus in Dubai also. Please go back to the last slide, ma'am. Just let me finish this IMT part. So IMT Dubai, and then uh, recently, some after I joined IMT, uh, our campus also got inaugurated in Hyderabad, IMT Hyderabad. So this is a group of institutions, one of the, one of the most reputed uh, management institutes in the country. So, and my pleasure to be with this uh, great institute for the last 10 years. And uh, I'm also extremely happy to announce uh, to the uh, August uh, audience that IMT Nagpur is also going to launch its uh, FPM program for this uh, fellow, fellowship in management, fellow, manage, fellow in management program. Uh, let us uh, go to the next slide now. 
Now, coming back to the topic, you know, I don't believe in discussing anything, neither listening nor talking, unless my why is clear. So here, the very topic is, my topic, my talk is innovative approaches in teaching. So obviously a question comes, why innovate? You know, we have been after all uh, teaching for so many years and uh, many of us have, uh, so why innovative approaches are the need of the hour? Question comes. Now, this, to answer this question, we should find out the very cause of our existence, why we exist. There's higher education institutes, be that engineering or management, why we exist? Why? We exist to cater to the need of the industry, to the need of the corporate, so that they have ready stream of industry ready professionals, isn't it? This is the very reason we exist. So our very target customer industry, it is undergoing a you know, unforeseen era of, I will call it revolution, industrial revolution. You know, it is complete revolution that is sweeping industry and corporate world, I mean, across the, across the globe. Rules of the game are changing every hour. You know, like I was listening to this video, I have also shared the link for those of you who will, uh, I would uh, request uh, the organizers to please share the PPT later with uh, those delegates, those attendees who are uh, willing to have it, uh, please share it so that they, can, they have all the necessary links and information with them for future. So I uh, bumped into this interesting video, which is an interview between uh, Doug McMillan, CEO of uh, Walmart, the by far the largest retailer in the world, and the then uh, CEO of Pepsi, Indra Nui, when it was recorded. Now Indra Nui has left Pepsi. So in that uh, particular interaction kind of a video, wherein both are interacting with each other, it's a very good video for all management students, Lot of management lessons are uh, one can learn from that video. I show it to my in my classes to my students. So Doug McMillan makes this statement that now strategies are drawn on hourly basis. In my time when I was actively working in corporate till some 15 years back, strategies used to be even then the strategies used to be uh, drawn on uh, yearly basis. Strategies were really basis planning used to be, uh, you know, but then the current revolution, as I as uh, I said, in the industrial in the business scenario, has uh, made uh, Doug make their statement like this: that now strategies are drawn on hourly basis. Can we go to the next slide, uh, Shivangi, ma'am? Uh, before trying to understand the magnitude of the revolution that we are talking in the industry, I will like to uh, you know, take uh, you down a little bit in the memory lane. Of course, these are for me. I was a youngster in my uh, early teens then, uh, when uh, my father uh, uh, bought his uh, third car. So he, he had already possessed one Fiat and one ambassador car. So finally, he made up his mind and went for the recently launched, the then recently launched four-door standard gazelle car. Many of uh, the youngsters may not be even knowing that a car called standard gazelle ever existed. But uh, yeah, I had that car. So I'm showing this particular slide to uh, all of you just to you know remind you that what was the business scenario or the competitive landscape at that time. Some 45 years back, this was uh, 1976, some 45 years back. So in car market in India, there were only three comp cars competing. 
ambassador, Fiat, and Standard. Standard Motors of uh, the then Madras, now Chennai. Hindustan Motors, we all know which ambassador uh, comes from that stable. It is a CK Pirla Group company, Chandragan Pirla Group company, Hindustan Motors. And Fiat used to be Premier Automobiles Limited. They were selling Fiat cars. Premier President, then Premier Company, and blah, blah. And now, where is the Indian? And how many, uh, what do you feel was the car market size of India at that time, this era, 1976? It was around 25,000 cars per annum. I'm talking about Indian car market size, whole of India. The total number of cars getting sold in India in as early, for me, of course, for youngsters, it might be an ages. So, because I vividly remember that era, the cars were priced between 26,000 to 30,000 rupees on an average. Now, my, uh, when we gift a mobile phone to our children on their birthday, that mobile costs around that much. So that was the price of, of the car. And, uh, you know, the Indian car market size was, as I told you, around 25 to 26,000 uh, units per uh, cars per annum. And what is the car market size of India today? Can anybody guess and put it on the chat for my, uh, you know, back office, uh, Shwangi ma'am and others to track because I am not focusing much on chat box and on now. I will definitely. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sir. We will take all the questions, queries in the end of the session, sir. Right. Thank you, Shwangi. Thank you. Okay, let me focus more on the topic. And in the end, the questions can be taken. I'll definitely be happy to take any question that is there in your mind. So current Indian car market size is more than 25 lakh star per annum. That is the growth, kind of growth that has happened 100 times, you know? So this is it. Uh, 100 times or 1,000, how many? This uh, 20, no, it is 100 times, 100 times growth. 25, 2.5 lakhs. And this is the scenario today. You know, I still remember uh, uh, driving that standard gazelle because I learned driving at a very early age of 11. And I'm very fond of driving even as of now. So this, uh, you know, uh, driving that car and imagine driving these modern cars, you know, this Tesla. And why only Tesla? Even some of the Indian companies, they are also talking of you know, such innovative uh, latest cars in the Indian market. Even Tesla is there. Electric car and then, you know, automated uh, driverless car, almost, uh, you know, it is a miracle. Yes, Shumagi man. But what we can gather from the last two slides that a uh, lot of changes have happened in the market scenario. Lot of changes. And uh, this esteemed professor of Harvard, uh, Professor Clayton Christensen, he wrote an epic book, which should be read by all management students and practitioners alike. That is the innovator's dilemma. He wrote it way back in 1997. I think the first edition came. And uh, you know, uh, since then, uh, it has, uh, again, made some more changes in his initial theory. In this famous book, Innovator's Dilemma, actually what Professor Clayton Christensen did was he unfortunately died early last year. I was a very avid uh, fan and follower of Professor Christensen. So in his subsequent books and research, he has uh, you know, further taken his initial concept of uh, of disruptive innovation that he had propounded. In that book, Innovator's Dilemma, uh, Professor Christensen had propounded the, coined the word called disruptive innovation. So why I brought it in this context, this particular uh, thing, that, uh, you know, he had basically heralded way back in 1997, the arrival of fourth industrial revolution, industry 4.0 as we call it now, fourth industrial revolution. So way, way back in the late 90s, 
Professor Clayton Christensen, a well-known strategist and uh, you know, very respected professor in, uh, in the world, he had propounded, uh, he had heralded, I will say, announced arrival of fourth industrial revolution. Ma'am, let us go forward. Now, we all know this industry 4.0 or fourth industrial revolution, we will come to that. There are three revolutions that the world has already seen. Uh, industry, first re industrial revolution, where basically, uh, you know, water and steam started, uh, powered uh, uh, mass production started. Then industry 2.0, you know, there was some uh, use of electricity and all these things, uh, you know. Basically electricity, production assembly powered by the electricity. Then third revolution, I was already a working professional then. It uh, hit uh, in India at least sometimes, uh, sometime around uh, mid 80s, I should say, mid 80s. I saw the arrival of those. I, let me just tell you, because I have got very, uh, uh, as I said, long experience in selling from salesman to CEO. So I, have, I will never forget that word, that particular uh, day and uh, sentence. I was uh, about to get an order of 400 typewriters. As I told you, I began my career selling typewriters, a company called Remington. The brand was Remington Rand. So, I was about to bag a big order of 400 typewriters from BCCL Dhanba, handling the entire Bihar territory then as an area manager. So I was about, and, but then the day when I was about to get the order, uh, the director purchase told me that uh, Chatterjee, I'm sorry, I would, we would not be able to give you the order. I asked him out of curiosity of a salesman that, that I thought it is going to some of my competition like Passit or Halda uh, or you know some other uh, typewriter manufacturer. No, there were not many. Passit, Halda were our main competitor. So I thought, or maybe brother, some uh, for that. But that was to be that that was to be important. So you know, I asked then what happened, uh, what went wrong. He said nothing went wrong with you or your product or your company. But we have bumped into a product, uh, but we are purchasing computer. He said that we are buying computer. I said, what? He said, yeah, computer, I'm told that one computer can do the job of 100 typewriters with a better efficiency and speed. And I was amazed. That was the first time I heard this term called computer. And uh, I had read it in some sci-fi books and all, but then I had never heard this uh, or bumped into one such product. So that was the advent of industry 3.0 or third industrial revolution. When computers, they made inroads into uh, India, India, Indian uh, market. They were making inroads at that time. And the uh, rest is history. We all know that we all got, I mean, quite shaken when computerization started of different business processes, we all working professionals, including ones in government and all, they were also wary of the, the uh, job loss and things like that. We all were pretty worried and we were registering. Why? Because we all know that we human beings, you know, what is our inherent tendency of human beings? Inherent, that is, we love to be in status quo. We love to maintain status quo. Even if it is a little painful, we human beings, we hate change because we again uh, are worried that we will need to, you know, change ourselves, our habit, we new skills and all. And so we are, we resist change and we were no exception at that time. But thanks to the then visionary Prime Minister, Honorable Sri Rajiv, let Sri Rajiv Gandhi, he pushed it forward. And today, whatever IT revolution in, we are seeing in India, he had made a lot of contribution in that revolution. He got assassinated, we all know, way back in 1991, I believe. He got assassinated. That's unfortunate. But anyway, that apart. And uh, ma'am, please uh, come back to the last slide. Now we are in the, uh, deep into the era of Industry 4.0 or Fourth Industrial Revolution. 
So what is the difference between industry 3.0 and industry 4.0? Uh, since we are not in face-to-face -face, uh, situation, I'm not uh, expecting any answer. One can put it on the uh, chat box. Industry 3.0, there was, you know, pros many processes got automated. Thanks to arrival of computer in the, in the scene, many business processes got automated. And industry 4.0, the basic difference is that then some business processes were getting automated. Okay, but now, uh, but now computers are also connected. Different devices like computers, mobile phones, tablets, they talk to each other. They are now interconnected as we call it, internet of things. The other day I was seeing a, you know, uh, some advertisement of, uh, not advertisement, some program on car on TV. And a person just uh, uh, pushed, uh, pressed his mobile from a, uh, uh, quite a distant place from the car and car got ignited, AC started cooling and all. And then he called the car with the help of mobile. The car came to him and then he boarded the car. Miracles are happening. In industry 4.0 era, Miracles are happening. Technological marvel, we should say. We should say technological marvel, isn't it? Ma'am, please. Uh... So as I briefly talked, fourth industrial revolution is actually not only, you know, uh, I should, we should say that uh, automation, but traditional manufacturing industrial practices using, using modern technology, wherein Machines and uh, devices are talking to each other and a uh, lot of, we, let us move forward, ma'am. So this has really revolutionized the whole business. And actually uh, already uh, when I was going through some research and all, and even in corporate sector, uh, mostly in research now, industry 5.0 is already being spoken about. The fifth industrial revolution, which will be basically marked by things like robotics and things like that. Remotes, remote control, more of, more of uh, technology, we should say. Ma'am, let's move forward. So let's try to understand this from the research of Santos et al. in 2019. Uh, each era of industrial revolution is innovative. Okay. And uh, as we move from first revolution to second revolution to third revolution, what happened? That, uh, you know, some of the existing skills were found to be obsolete and the new skills were demanded. So obviously any uh, industrial revolution uh, will uh, you know, call for new skills to adapt or to leverage or to take advantage of that uh, new technology which is driving the revolution. Hence, some people will be gainers and some of the existing people who will upskill will be gainers. Those who don't will have to pay the price. Obvious conclusion. So the market has been uh, invaded in current era by digital technology. And the use of technologies by all ages is required or requested, whatever we call it. We being now elderly, uh, in terms of age, we can't say that we have not this technology. It is like either evolve or get extinct. Next slide, ma'am. So basically, as I already told you, Industry 4.0, what it has done over Industry 3.0 when computers invaded the market, it further optimized the computerization. You know, computers got connected to each other. So this is called optimization of the computerization that took place in Industry 3.0. Next uh, slide. So once again, uh, I will emphasize that industry 4.0 wave is built on technological advancement. It is about significant change which is taking place and its impact is being uh, you know, felt across the globe. So according to historians, human civilization has two date undergone as I briefed you about it, three industrial revolutions, first, second, and third. 
and in every revolution some skill sets got obsolete new skills were demanded so fourth industrial revolution which we are currently seeing is no exception obviously the obvious conclusion is if we don't upskill we will be uh, you know uh, making ourselves redundant there will be you know we will be uh, we will be automatically got filtered out by the uh, by the system so to say this was a research by myseri and myseri at all it et al <clears throat> in 2019 yes, i mean intentionally i have taken that the latest research in the field please next slide ma'am so basically industry 4.0 is a term today for the new age of intelligent manufacturing smart factory basically it has impacted you know the factory manufacturing process has undergone tremendous revolution wherein you know basically uh, cpa so cyber physical systems are in so it is uh, as uh, we say all this as we see all these technologies uh, pervading the manufacturing sector like robots augmented reality simulation cyber city iot big data cloud computing all the there are nine foundational uh, pillars of the smart factory or fourth industrial revolution uh but do we feel, do we say so that uh, do we uh, can we conclude that it is only impacting our uh, the product and manufacturing no it is impacting all all the you know functional areas because technology is a multifaceted concept and it can you know it can manifest itself in any area of business any area the other day i was uh, reading that you know even hr even performance appraisal process recruitment everywhere technology is making inroads artificial intelligence machine learning and all is a order of the day now it can manifest itself in more efficient uh, and faster supply chain it can manifest itself anywhere in the in the in the in the business scenario in the business context so let us not limit our uh, discussion think uh, thinking that the technology will only impact the manufacturing process so engineers should worry about that or it will only impact the you know product it can manifest itself in any uh, any uh, where it can manifest itself anywhere in the world yes ma'am let's move forward so as we said there are uh, already see, saw that there are nine foundational technologies or pillars as i we can call it of industry 4.0 robots robots simulation system integration then internet of things cyber security then uh, cloud computing then uh, auditing uh, then uh, additive manufacturing 3d printing and all then augmented reality and big data big data now companies thanks to this interconnected machines that are talking to each other all companies are sitting on huge pile of data use use gone are the days some 35 40 years back when i was a field salesman and used to generate lead and try to find the customer need customers needs and wants by making cold call on them you know now what is happening now these devices like you know uh our android phone then alexa then siri we, we say that alexa please switch on the fan please switch on the ac are if alexa can listen to that then and obey alexa can also listen to the private talk that we are having within our family isn't it common sense so in fact the other day my wife demonstrated when i looked at her with little disbelief she said let's discuss something on the dining table and we discuss some particular 
uh, kitchen appliance in our dining table, talking to each other at our in our in the setup of our home. And uh, she showed she showed me the other day, next day, or maybe a couple of hours later, she was bombarded with the advertisement on Facebook and all social media with that particular product. So, what is the conclusion? My con our conclusion is now because of these interconnected devices, companies, uh, you know, we are, if I can call it so. I will call it, we are standing naked in front of these modern marketers. They know more about you and me than we know about ourselves. It is not only our needs and preferences. They are so intently listening to us all the time, 24 seven, we are under CCTV. Without, uh, you know, oblivious to that, we find that Alexa is their good, good assistant of mine, but Alexa is also a good spy Deputed by the market, I mean uh, Google at our place, Siri, you know all these uh, products. Our Android phone it keeps listening to us constantly. So why I was trying to tell you all this that uh, companies are having huge data about us, huge data. So they need people who can churn that data, mine that data, as we call it, data analytics to find out a meaningful inter interpretation which they can use in their business. So obviously this gives rise to big data. You know, data scientists, data scientists, I found most of the marketing MBAs nowadays, they find job in either digital marketing or marketing analytics. Of course, traditional marketing still exists and will continue to exist. It's not that, uh, uh, you know, the, the total requirement of one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting and trying to, uh, this is a COVID era, this is an exceptional uh, crisis, but uh, normally they will coexist, but they definitely the major chunk of marketing will be market digital marketing will be and, on, uh, and uh, marketing analytics. Many jobs will crop up in these two fields, analytics and uh, digital space. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Here, since we are talking to, talking our discussion is on how to innovate our teaching, how to bring in innovation in our- So, yes? in between, can we have some polls? Oh yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you, you can you can put one or two and uh, All first right. put and just show the result. Participant, here's one poll poll first. You have to choose one. Sir, so this is the result of poll one. Okay. How it looks like? Like uh, how many are distributed? Yeah. So can we see the how many of them have given correct answer? Sir, question is, which of the following is not a reason for adopting innovative approaches to teaching? Teaching, correct. 37% so, of the participant responded, engineering and management institute exist to cater to the needs of the industry to get industry ready professionals. 22% responded, responded industry is undergoing a revolution and 30% responded 
Rules of the game are changing every hour, as Doug McMillan, CEO of Walmart, once said. Now strategies are drawn on hourly basis, and 15% responded. Responded. Students will only join those institute which adopt innovative teaching methodology. Yeah. So this last one uh, is the only 15%. Is not a reason, so uh, I am. I can I can we can I conclude that only fifteen percent have given the correct answer, isn't it, Shivan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fifteen percent respondent has responded correctly. Have responded correctly. So anyway, that uh, I mean, uh, the question was slightly. <laughs> Okay, sir. Now I am sharing a poll too. Okay. Who heralded the concept of disruptive innovation? Sir, here's the result of poll two. Hmm. This time it is uh, quite encouraging. Yes, uh, sir. If I can see it is how much? Fifty percent or sixty percent? Sixty percent. Sixty percent are correct. Bravo! Congratulations, Professor Clayton Christensen, in his famous book *The Innovator's Dilemma*, propounded the concept or heralded the concept of disruptive innovation, which we can we are seeing every day. In, uh, you know. Industry 4.0 era, and it will be more fierce in Industry 5.0, which is almost there. Robotics and all are almost there. I'm uh, knocking at the door. Right, uh, Shivangi, ma'am, can we move yes, forward? Sir. Yes, sir. No, let's go back to the last slide. Just, yeah. I can't see the slide because of the hole being still there. Can we please minimize the pole or uh, just uh, discovering the slide? Sir, by your side, you can minimize this. Acha, okay, okay. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So this is, you know, this is a slide which basically talks of, uh, uh, you know, this is again uh, from uh, proceedings of a conference. So these are all uh, basically research findings that what are the hard and soft skills required by Industry 4.0, and we all need to know that. Because onus lies on you and me as faculty uh, of engineering uh, and management institutes to give the industry, you know, industry ready professionals. And these are the skill sets in demand. Hard skills, just let's go through some of them. Languages, language knowledge, language knowledge is a hard skill. Communication skill is a soft skill. So language knowledge, then degrees, apprenticeship, certificates, of different technical or information focus. So here, let me, you know, these are the hard skills required, then machine operation, programming language, software knowledge, cloud computing, knowledge of processes and blah, blah. And soft skills uh, list is again in front of us, flexibility, self-discipline, people management, time management, emotional intelligence, critical thinking and blah, blah. 
so these are the skills that uh, you know our students should go to corporate with so that they are in demand and they fulfill the need of the corporate in industry 4.0 era yeah let's go to this next slide shivangi iot i have already told you internet of things but we all should uh, we all know the term by now it's very common common place while coming back from office you can switch on your ac in advance you can switch on your uh, refrigerator so internet of things now computers all these uh, internet enabled uh, devices they are actually visually connected and they can you know they can communicate with each other without human intervention so this is called internet of things and has huge application in all spheres of business all sphere retail everywhere such as industry now we are also uh, academics are also part of it you know because we are also an industry academics is also a, uh, it is in fact the fastest growing business in the world today, academics so let us not uh, isolate let us not see ourselves in isolation we are very much part of industry uh, 4.0 era and we are also we have to revolutionize if we have to stay relevant to our target market that is called Yes, ma'am. Next slide, please, Shivangi ma'am. Now, let us just briefly uh, five ten minutes discussion, and I will not take uh, much time uh, about what are the different applications of these technologies or Industry 4.0, as we call it. First of all, as I briefly talked about, that now they are having you know immense opportunity, immense information about the market. Modern marketers, unlike my time. they are sitting on immense information about their target market so one is so they can identify opportunities even opportunities of future well in advance this is one advantage and uh, then it can optimize sub logistics and supply chain we can see you know the delivery time squeezing in now that is covid era some uh, time they take otherwise we 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 are we have got used to you know ordering on something on as amazon prime and getting it the the, the stuff at our door delivered either the same day or next day morning so this is optimize uh, optimize so much of uh, optimization in supply chain has happened thanks to again this technologies different technologies yes ma'am next slide then there can be autonomous equipment and vehicles you know automated we can see in the, if you go to any modern warehouse or factories we will see you know lot of uh, autonomous equipment and vehicles which are programmed uh, some kind of technology so they they you know they can move forth uh, here and there unmanned robots are already very much in uh, in picture in fact one of my friends mr rajiv karwal he has uh, got a company and he's uh, and he is into robot ro ro robots and he has done huge business in this covid era in hospitals and all these places so as and then the hotel industry is a big buyer so then of course some uh, rich uh, upper middle class and upper class uh, holistic uh, people have also bought with the robots can mop the place can do lot of things for you so they are there already then additive manufacturing or 3d printing it has revolutionized the factories the manufacturing process so engineering my engineering i mean uh, those faculty members who are teaching in engineering colleges they have to pay special attention to this uh, these things now you know this additive manufacturing 3d printing and update our students and prepare them to you know be relevant to stay relevant in this era of uh, smart factory and iot i told you what it is iot and cloud computing now all are quite used to shivangi ma'am can we uh could we did we did we uh, skip one slide please go back yes so skills in demand by industry 4.0 will basically be networking it and iot obvious internet of things data science data architects and scientists data analytics anything to do with big data if you if you are given a big data and you can really churn it mine it and you know you you can pick out a pattern in the data and give some you know uh, meaning to it you are a, you are a valued person 
this you know reminds me to sometime these mba graduates uh i i found them they are pretty worried about their package their salary and uh, all no i mean of course it is uh, nothing wrong in it but it reminds me of that uh, instead of focusing on package if they focus on making themselves useful to the industry package will follow them will say money will chase them i don't know some of you may be fond of i was very fond of watching movies in my uh, student days so one movie i had uh, watched uh, which was uh, released in 1975 called the war i was a great fan of amita bachchan even now i am fan but that time i was crazy about him so there was a scene wherein iftikhar a smuggler a businessman wants to uh, recruit amita bachchan to his uh, team and uh, in a hotel scenario the talks are going on so iftikhar's that particular dialogue last dialogue to rope him in to his gang uh, that that captured my imagination the dialogue was uh, amitabh's name in the movie was vijay vijay mujhe tumhari zarurat hai aur iske badle main tumhari har zarurat puri kar sakta hu what does it mean what does it imply that businessmen and corporate they are they are there to pay you know the right people provided they need you you make the need feel and salary will chase you money will chase you in corporate there is nothing like 20% 30% you know even in my time my salary used to be double one when i was changing companies there were nothing called you are getting 100 now so we will give you 130 if they found me that i can uh, if they found if they used to find that i would add value to them and used to then they will offer me anything that so this dialogue is not only a movie dialogue it it happens in the real life also that vijay mujhe tumhari zarurat hai aur iske badle main tumhari har zarurat puri kar sakta so that is it you know mba students please be 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 you see yourself how much worth you can deliver to them to the corporate they are there to pay you they have no i mean dearth of money if you deserve it but yeah if you deserve it underline so data science is an in thing today then developers and software engineers were in demand continue to be in demand even continue to be in demand but uh, these are some of the other uh, skills which will be also called for along with this hard skills of data science and or python advanced excel and all machine learning cloud computing apart from that attention to detail critical thinking strong communication skill let us not get lost let us not get lost uh only in uh, technology being technologically brilliant is imper- imperative that is also that is required but being only technologically brilliant will not see us far in corporate because you know there is a clear cut demand and why i slightly paused and emphasized here is that in my corporate career of more than 20 years i have worked with several engineers even from the top schools like iits and all mit and every all over the so i have seen them from close quarters so there is no doubt about their you know their their their, their technological brilliance i have no doubts about that they are brilliant our engineers are brilliant technologically technically they are they in their domain there but many of them many of them could not go up the corporate ladder beyond a point despite all their technological brilliance is that they lacked communication skill it's a fact it's a derived it is a it is a fact that i am talking probably it is something to do with our left brain right brain i don't know that uh, that research uh, we have to find out probably if your brain is too much into numbers and all your something is there but i find a correlation between being a very brilliant engineer and uh, you know having uh, not equally strong communication skill so why i am bringing this point here that our engineering uh, college faculty 
they should definitely, with due respect to them, they are doing an excellent job. Yet, they also need to, you know, uh, impart some training uh, or rather pay enough attention to the communication skill of their graduates so that they stay relevant in corporate sector and uh, they can, you know, achieve the height that they really deserve there. And then dependability and ability. Yes, Shivangi, ma'am, please let's go forward. Now, this is a disappointing finding. This is, these are all research findings. It is not my opinion that I'm sharing here, by the way. Because in the end, I've given you glossary or whatever you call it, this references, uh, biography and all where all you can refer to the research in the future. So they say that new talents are no longer being trained by university. Companies have taken the onus on themselves. So is it a very happy scenario for you know, acad academia like you and me? No. Industry have, has, uh, you know, they must have been disappointed by, uh, you know, the kind of training or the kind of corporate readiness that we are providing our uh, students. So they have taken the onus on themselves. Most of the, these, they, they recruit them, seeing the potential, and they train them up to, for their job, which is not a very happy scenario, very happy news for we in academia. So we need to take attention. That's why I put it in bold letter. And I have already told you that there's uh, transversal skills like communication, negotiation, that is uh, important along with technological and hard skills. Next slide, Shivangi, ma'am. And uh, this research uh, shows that, you know, this teaching these transversal or communication skills is more difficult than teaching technical skills, which you and me, we, will, we should also, I mean, we, there's a more of a common sense, good that research also supports this viewpoint. Research findings also support this kind of notion. It is easy to teach somebody that two plus two is equal to four, but it's difficult to somebody how to communicate his thoughts, how to, you know, uh, this, all these soft skills, interpersonal skills, negotiation skills, you know, these are very, uh, these are skills which only come with a lot of practice. And uh, they are definitely more difficult. So there are some workshops now, many workshops going on, communication skill, personality development and all this, but definitely this is more challenging than teaching somebody how to use Excel or advanced Excel. Next slide, Shivangi ma'am. And this is what I already uh, told you, that uh, many research, many authors, they found that uh, our engineers, they must possess because they lack social and collaborative skills. And I'm, I'm, I'm not in a position to take number, uh, take name in this uh, public forum, otherwise openly, otherwise I can name, you know, numbers, uh, many engineers with, uh, who work with me, uh, engineers and also MBAs who worked with me, but they could not go beyond a certain level in their career because of the lack of these soft skills like social skills, collaborative skills, negotiation skills, persuasion skills, interpersonal skills, man management skills, you know, which is very, very unfortunate. They were brilliant. So I'm trying to emphasize the importance of these skills, nothing else here. Yeah. To all our, because onus lies on you and me, my dear faculty colleagues, my esteemed faculty uh, fraternity. Onus lies on you and me to impart those skills also to our students. Yeah. Yes, uh, Shivangi. Uh, no, no, we, we probably just go back. So both are required, technical as well as academic skills and uh, uh, Prifti's research. It clearly captures that big data analytics combined with the skills of data science combined with these soft skills uh, are in demand. You know, I can run, I am very smart in technology, but I am not a team player. I cannot communicate. I cannot provide any leadership. I cannot negotiate with any client. I am good for nothing for the corporate and, uh, you know, I cannot go beyond the point. Then I'm a, a more of a clerk. Yes, uh, Shivangi, ma'am, let's move forward. 
So these are three uh, soft skills which have been uh, which have been found in the research by Cote et al. That creativity, emotional intelligence, proactive thinking, very very important, along with marketing analytics. I am already I am, this. I am not belittling hard skills at all. Data science, data mining, and marketing analytics. These are in thing, but they have to be you know like cake uh, loses its sheen unless there is an icing on the top. The soft skills are icing on the top. Yes. So basically, to be effective in Industry 4.0, now it comes to us. Discussion comes to our uh, real field that technical and academic institutions, both engineering and management, must promote novelty in methods of acquiring and using knowledge. You know, this is very very important. Please, please let us keep it in mind. Uh, the entire faculty, fraternity, and my esteemed faculty colleagues who are sitting here. It's very, very important to keep on innovating ourselves. Ourselves, forget about uh, uh, anything. We need to always reinvent ourselves. There is no end to our learning because the day we stop learning, we uh, declare ourselves you know, uh, redundant to any field. And academics, so it is very much required. Constant ambition. So, enough. Uh, next. This is a research by Shwet Sova Kuzmina that point out that there is a reduction. There could be a reduction. She's warning that, uh, you know, the, the, not, there will not be enough qualified people to really leverage, take advantage of Industry 4.0 technology. So, although not specifying the actual type of institution, they didn't, but then Shwet Sova and Kuzmina's research clearly found that there are needed, these are uh, that uh, needed in higher education, digitize, digitalization of education, training personalization, integration of professional and academic training, very, very important and blah, blah. Yes, ma'am, next slide. So again, the fourth industrial revolution, there are, there are some research findings that I have quoted here, uh, and uh, this will be there with you for your future reference. You can read this research in detail. A complete article either on Google Scholar or wherever is your source, you know. But they say they clearly conclude this research that since higher educational institutions, uh, as a man, uh, my uh, PPT is getting you know slightly covered by this particular. Uh, can anything be done? Can you can you uh, do something, Shivangi, ma'am? Right now. Uh, if you can just uh, move it a little more. Partially, it is getting covered by PPT, by this frame that is appearing. Now, fine, yeah. sir. Uh, it is relatively fine. Okay, I will. So, anyway, so this is very, very important, you know, that uh, the research have found that we lag behind in developing educational programs. Research shows that these are all very recent research and let us take that fact into account. So we lag behind. So future challenge will be to restructure jobs and educational programs. It is by K and Etal in 2015. So we need to restructure, reinvent ourselves. Please, next slide. This is a statistic that in Germany, there will be some you know, what will be the scenario in terms of job market and all. It's a very relevant research, Lorenz et al. 2015, which says that number of interdisciplinary programs that incorporate the optimal skill set. Actually, what there is, what is required probably by us is more interfunctional approach, inter interfunctional approach. It's not that if I'm a marketing faculty, I will uh, not know what is being taught or what should be there in finance, or operations, or for that matter, HR. So more holistic approach. Let us not work in uh, silos. And in engineering institutes, similarly, it is not that sense, you know, you are a mechanical engineer, so you can ignore what is happening in electrical or what is happening in, uh, you know, instrumentation and computer science and blah, blah, blah. More, more holistic approach is required by all of us. Because, see, imagine when I was a CEO, what I was doing, was I a marketing man? Was I an operations guy? Was I a uh, finance guy? Was I an HR guy? 
holistic approach. And this should be, you know, uh, this should be our way of looking at things. So we are in management college, we are management faculty. In engineering college, you are a technical uh, engineering faculty. Of course, there will be, uh, you know, equal amount of knowledge. The, uh, the knowledge that I probably you have in some mechanical engineer will have in his field. But then we should uh, try to break that barrier as much as possible and trying to look at things more holistic. Need of the hour, we can't help it. Next slide, uh, Shivangi. So this is, you know, again, this virtual reality, what has done is you know, a smart product designer. Now this product, new product development has undergone revolution. Earlier when Sony clearly used to use, uh, enjoy a lead of three years over Panasonic, when they used to launch a product, Panas, they, they used to uh, you know, enjoy a lead of at least three years over Panasonic. But now that has been compressed to few months. Why? Because of these technologies like virtual reality, augmented reality. So this product uh, development cycle has been compressed and it has been shorted. Next. So this is again that CPS, you know, that collaborative devices between uh, technology and human being for this. Uh, there are some researches given here. I'm not reading it line by line. This is, has got to do with that. Now, this research by Bak et al. as early as 2020 uh, has important managerial implications, both for practitioners and also for we academicians, higher educational uh, institutes. Because what they did was that they did, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, text mining of different job advertisements, huge number, and they, they applied the technique of the text mining, and they came out with the skills which will be in demand in uh, Industry 4.2. So please, I will urge the esteemed uh, faculty colleagues and also research scholars to please, uh, you know, read this research in detail. It has got a lot of implication for academic institutes, its faculty, and everything. Next. Yeah, here I'm concluding that particular research, research finding. Yeah, by back at that. Please read this article in complete. Because here we have done some time. Let's go forward, ma'am. So what is the road ahead for educational institutes? One is we can create a concept, maker space. This is a concept, very recent concept of maker space, which basically like some, you know, uh, like we have uh, created some, uh, you know, incubation centers, some labs and things like that. So this maker space is basically, you know, will help our students, uh, help our students adopting a holistic approach. This maker space, you can call it anything. It will be a space wherein students from marketing, students from HR, students from operations, they all can go and they all can deliberate and they all can, you know, apply their uh, creative discussions and all, and some tools can be provided by the institute so that they try to develop something, you know, on their own. So this is very much required, this, uh, this uh, breaking the silos of being a mechanical engineer, being an instrumentation engineer, being a chemical engineer, uh, that silos need to be broken because ultimately holistic. So I'm an HR person, I'm a marketing person, I'm a finance person. Unless we break out of that mentality and then simply ask the question, then who is this, what, what, what job a CEO does? Is he a marketing man? As I told you. Next. So this is again, concept of maker space. It is very, very useful. And uh, some of, uh, we should adopt it in our institute, uh, maker space concept. This will help our students a lot. Make them future ready. Let's move forward. Uh, this is from the research of Santos et al. Et al. in 2019. They have you know, discussed this. They have done a research on a particular institute somewhere in some country. Okay. But it's a good research. And I will urge some of you, that's why I have given you the full reference of the research so that you can access it on Google Scholar or any research site. Yes, ma'am. Carries on that concept of. Here, this slide, 
See, it is my firm belief that uh, MBAs are designed to go serious. Firm belief. And uh, in my class or whenever I informally also interact with my students or I want to wish them, my famous slogan to my students is go CEO. Nothing less, because I say that otherwise you're wasting your MBA. You know? But having said that, uh, because I've been former chairperson, placement chair, then I myself worked in corporate for so many years. And by nature also, many of my friends are still working in corporate and most of them are at my age, they are CEOs. So I frequent them, I, I keep meeting them, interacting with them wherever, I, whenever I find opportunity. I'm very much in touch with uh, corporate. And I find that there are uh, many corporate CEOs, big corporates I'm talking. So again, I will not, I cannot take name in this forum, but till recent, you know, till recent, uh, companies like uh, even some big insurance companies, like say, uh, like IFCO Tokyo General Insurance, their CEO was a MA in history, masters in history. Now neither engineer nor an MBA, but many engineers MBAs were reporting to him. So. What and, and this I'm talking about a couple of years back, very recent. Uh, and there are several such uh, CEOs I know who are uh, not MBA, at least engineering. So I'm sure about this. Uh, so this is what then, what takes you to CEO? If that, not that uh, technical skill or uh, skill, not, not formal degree. That is where I, I wanted to point out. That is what I wanted to. That formal degree is like having a B.Tech, having an M.Tech, having a Ph.D., having an M.B.A., having a D.L.E.T. is all fine. But to go to the top, you these certain skills are required, along with this qualification. More the qualification, better it is. I'm not belittling the qualification, but I'm trying to uh, drive the point home that qualification alone is not enough unless some skills are there. So at the very top, Again, research is at the bottom of the slide, that particular research. I, I could see that four groups of leadership skills that this research could find out. It's a very well accepted and respected research as early as Guzman et al. 2020. That cognitive skills, business skills, interpersonal skills, and strategies. Obviously, because when I was a CEO or this, how could this guy, uh, guy whom I uh, can't name, was successfully handling the position of CEO in that company without being technically very sound because at CEO level, he knew how to get the job done. He himself may not know a lot of data analytics techniques. He may not know R, he may not know Python. They, those terms or those technologies may be Greek to him, but he knows what these technologies can do and he knows what he needs on his dashboard. He knows what he needs on his dashboard. Rekit, a company like Rekit, again, I will not name the person, was having a CEO who was illiterate in uh, when it comes to data analytics, but he was CEO of that company. But data analytics is heavily used. So you may not know when my, 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 my uh, by the way, my father was a bureaucrat. He was an IAS officer in uh, So he was heading a department and there were so many typists and all these uh, people, skilled people were uh, engineers and all were working under him. Whereas he has never touched a typewriter. So it is not that now typewriters are computers and all these, uh, you know, uh, so-called these skills, they have replaced those uh, traditional skills like shorthand and typewriting and all. So to go a commissioner to head a department in a state, you know, you did not uh, know everything, but you should know how to control, manage, and leverage the skills of different people who are working under you. You know, when the, he had made the famous stage, uh, statement, Andrew Carnegie, that steel magnet. Andrew Carnegie once promoted one non-engineer to the CEO, and many, you know, these uh, well-qualified engineers they questioned him that he is not even an engineer and you are making him our CEO. And we have been working, he said that he may not be an engineer, but he knows 
how to get the job done by you engineers. Very, very important at that level, the skill set changes. The skill required at, are, are changes at the very top. But having said that, again, I'm not belittling the importance of our students knowing the, these technical skills uh, in today's scenario, like uh, advanced Excel, R, Python, machine learning, yeah. not all, but some, because you can't start from the top, no. And now it is the route to the top, both different levels, these skills are required. But those skills, along with these skills, leadership skills will take you CEO. Please remember it. Next slide, uh, Shivangi, ma'am. And this is a very relevant slide. This is the whole point of my discussion with you. Uh, that, uh, you know, what are the best practices? This, I, uh, I had attended this ISB master program, Indian School of Business, Hyderabad. And I will recommend all my faculty members that uh, whenever you find opportunity and situation permits, once attend this master teacher program in ISP. This is worth it, boss, I'm telling you. Because I learned a lot of things and it changed. Anyway, I don't know whether it was God, uh, God uh, given ability. I mean, uh, God had bestowed on me that I have always been a good faculty. Let me tell you from my own history, I'm not trying to with my own trumpet is acknowledged by my students only. I have already, I have always been acknowledged as a good faculty, but having gone to this particular training program, I definitely learned a lot, evolved a lot, applied some of the techniques in my class, and I uh, could uh, clearly deliver more value to my stakeholders, students, stakeholders and students. So it talks of, you know, best practices, 10 methods of master teachers, then case teaching, how to do that, I was not very at home. I used to discuss cases in the class from my own practical experience of so many years in corporate, but I learned a lot regarding case teaching and writing also. Then how to leverage different technologies like, uh, you know, this camcast and all in pre-class and in-class activities. A lot of, and in this uh, COVID has compelled you and me to learn a lot about these technologies now, because that's the only way. Today we are meeting virtually. I can't see you to see how painful it is for me. I'm addressing so many, uh, you know, esteemed uh, and august uh, gathering of academicians and uh, you know learned people from industry and all. You can at least see me in a very minuscule form, but I can't even do that. But anyway, thanks to the technology, at least we are meeting virtually. So then, case writing is a must publication. Managing learning styles of students. There are different types of students who have different learning styles. Some are active learners, some are passive learners, some are, you know, there are different types. This you will find in any psychology book of any book which deals with this subject learning styles. But we must try to understand that and uh, adapt ourselves accordingly. Because learning ability, learning styles, this, uh, you know, differs from uh, person to person. Then implementing, that is very important, assurance of learning. It is not only, though that uh, it is required for accreditation of different like ACSB and all, but even apart from the accreditations, this is very, very important concept. Dear, I mean, esteemed faculty colleagues, assurance of learning, AOL, because it captures, you know, it uh, while, 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 while uh, doing that map, we tend to know that what we are delivering in class what kind of, uh, first of all, that program level objective, then year level objective, then group level, then, you know, our vision, and finally it connects to the vision of the institute. So it's a very, very important concept. So let us not do it only with the spirit of getting some uh, so-called accreditation. It is, anyway, it is going to add value to us as a faculty and also to our students, our, our ultimate stakeholders. And of course, uh, at this age, I did my PhD at the age of 55. I did my PhD at the age of 55, three years back. Then I'm currently, you know, pursuing some course on digital marketing and all just to update myself because in my time, these were not there. When I was actively working in corporate, these uh, technologies and these things were not there. So there is no 
age to learning if i can do my phd at this age and uh, and uh, then start writing articles some of my articles have been published and we all know since we all are in the same boat that it is a time taking process so many some two three of my articles are in under review at different stages in different top journals so maybe two three years down the line i will have more publications so in publication is what today what you are writing will see the light of the day come minimum two three years later because review and all these things take a lot of time especially in uh, good journals so but this is a must because this uh, you know i earlier used to uh, not detest it that what is this and i have worked so much. but having done my while doing my phd and when i uh, wanted uh, to do some research and publish them i saw that my learning was going many fold you know it helps us keeping updated with the latest developments in the chosen field my research interest area primarily is tourism marketing but whatever field we choose and it is very very important for us to uh, we faculty to constantly update ourselves you know let us not bank too much on the past information every day you know there is no other way if we are not doing that so today or tomorrow the system will uh, you know uh, declare us obsolete and we will be popped out we will be churned out of the system automatically nobody has to come and do that for us we will <laughs> declare ourselves redundant like the movie abhiman abhiman amitabh bachchan was a great singer and then in between having some kind of ego issue with his wife jaya bhaduri who was more successful as a singer later playback singer he went into oblivion on his own you know khud hi wo gumnami ke andhere mein chala gaya tha to usi tarah se you know we will declare ourselves uh, redundant and oblivion and uh, we will lose our existence constant updation is a must you know and many innovative methods we have to bring in uh shivangi ma'am can we go to the next slide sir can we have some polls oh sorry yeah 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 because poll i forget We're not being a, a oh. yeah thanks for reminding shivangi ma'am here's poll four participants So see the result. Yeah, not bad. Fifty-one percent are correct. Fifty-fifty. It's fifty-fifty. It's fifty-fifty. Not nifty-fifty. Good, good. Congratulations, esteemed participation uh, participants. I know I'm addressing you know the learned people, and uh, it was my privilege and honor to speak to you for some time and share my ideas. After all, what is academics? We share ideas and we keep learning from each other. Another okay. poll. Shivangi, ma'am, seems to be a very strict. Uh, <laughs> students must be having tough time. <laughs> Sir, this will help us to record their attendance and their active participations, so that we can easily distribute them certificate. I know, I know. And now, participants, please be alert. Shivangi, ma'am, is very strict. Exactly this thing. if she doesn't find you here you are you know you will miss your certification i'm just kidding sir result of poll say yeah. not a hard skill required so How many of them are correct? Communication skill is the right answer, sir. Mm -hmm. So forty-three percent. Yeah, good, very good. 
We have brilliant students sitting here in, the, in this class. Congrats. I'm happy. The last poll. Sir, this is the result. <laughs> yeah. So this time only, uh, this time 39% are correct. Yes, sir. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Good. Sir, anything you want to add as per the results we get? As per the result, Why yeah, only 39%? Why they are not 100% right or 80%? 80%, yes. The reason being, you see, that is what I have been harping on that, uh, you know, in industry 4.0 also, technical skills are required. Technical skills are very much required and will be again rendered redundant unless we are technically competent because we can't start from CEO. CEO level, the importance of soft skills, uh, you know, are also uh, increases. As you go up the ladder, your requirement of soft skills, you know, is, uh, like if you, we take two glasses and we pour, you know, little uh, scotch in one, uh, one glass and uh, full water in another glass. So that is, you know, then slowly we keep on. So, you know, when at the beginning of the career, technical skills are very, very important in corporate. You know, at grassroots level, technical skills are required, very much required. But as you go up the ladder, that mix of water and scotch, it keeps on changing. You know, like there is always a demand of some technical skills. We, we, we can't do without that. But then soft skills far uh, outweigh that. That's why I, I uh, gave you some example of non-engineer, non-MBA CEOs who are calling the shots even today in at that level. So that is what, you know, the, we need to be equally important. So it, it cannot take a backseat. Communication and collaborative skills cannot take a backseat. Who, uh, anyone sitting in the audience, uh, especially this question is for the students who will not like to go see you? I don't think any. So, because without this, the skills, two, these two communication collaborative skills, you take it from me that no matter what you are, technically, how much competent you are, you cannot go at the top, go to the top. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's it. And so let's uh, draw some con try to draw some conclusion here. So this is the concluding slide, I believe, that to stay relevant to Industry 4.0 scenario, institutes of higher education have no choice but to evolve continuously with the market. First conclusion. We have no choice. And the need, they need. Curriculum 4.0, faculty 4.0 to justify. Because merely having curriculum 4.0 will not see. Faculty also have to be faculty 4.0. What I mean here, anyone? Uh, okay. So what I mean here is faculty 4.0 means the faculty who is in regular touch with the latest developments in the corporate first time. We should have a first-hand information of which way corporates are going, what is happening there. And we cannot just, you know, as many of us we know, uh, we do. We, you know, after our classes or whatever, we confine ourselves in the comforts of our uh, ivory tower, as I call it, 10 by 10 cabin, air-conditioned cabin, open our laptop and start doing research. Yeah, isolating ourselves from the ground reality of the market. It is, uh, this, this includes me also, but uh, 
well i uh, since i am an ex corporate uh, guy myself and that too from uh, sales field sales and marketing i am in the habit of going out and meeting people which helps me a lot in my classroom and i know exactly first and i know what they are what they need what they what is their thought process so this is one field because again i find as i told you from my corporate experience that i find some very i found some brilliant engineers who were lacking this communication collaborative interpersonal skill among this faculty community also i find many faculty who are lacking that first hand information of what is going on in the corporate because as a professor i will call you i will call a spade a spade i am also one of you i am part of your fraternity i am nothing different but i will ask those of you some of you i'm sure must be in touch with the corporate those of you who are not please make it a point that you know that uh, talk to yourself we are we are educated academic we are intelligentsia make a promise to yourself that at least once in a week i will visit some corporate or the other with an aim to you know befriend somebody there and uh, try to know their needs and wants in terms of our students khud ko khud promise kare hum na i feel very uncomfortable if if for 3 4 days 5 days i don't interact with any of the uh, corporate guys in non covid time physically and in covid time every uh, on uh, virtually or on phone it is imperative we should have a first hand information of corporate gone are the days when faculty used to sit in ivory tower do research publish that and used to that will not work that will not work any longer when lou gusner had joined uh, ibm what why why he he found that ibm was uh, about to it was failing in fact ibm would have been history had uh, that gusner guy not uh, joined them at that time he found that ibm uh, this had become very too big big blue and the you know vice presidents and all they were they were living in a you know kind of make believe world they had distanced themselves from the customer by doing that the we are inviting doomsday because our customer so he made it a point to uh, you know himself meet some customers per week and by when ceo does that signal is clear vice presidents and everybody has to repeat so he 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 walked this talk instead of talking to them he did it and led by example similarly in uh, academics also now is the we that will not do they are on chair research we will not either uh, through consulting or through you know uh, through uh, management development programs or by whatever by that 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 route is yours but let us know let us keep in touch with our customers who are corporates merely you know sitting in our ivory tower of make believe world that i have done a doctorate and i have published many papers but we don't that know anything about the ground reality that will not work any longer i tell you if this continues rooms day is not far so then that is there and then as research shows that current scenario is far from satisfactory i already told you uh, you know what i am talking as uh, research has also found the same thing so the active collaboration with the industry is required so writings on the wall is loud and clear evolve or get extinct natural selection survival of the fittest these are some of the references of the articles i once again request organizers and especially shivangi ma'am because uh, she is unparalleled in last few days i have really tested her i mean any time you call she is and she is so polite so cooperative so helpful there are no words so those of you who want to get the you know acha ma'am you skip that the, the lovely photographs of mine in isb or you showed it yes sir this acha you have shown yes. good good uh, this is with professor david sharp the uh, you know uh, an emperor of case uh, case writing from iv good and there are some others so this is a good program i will recommend all faculty members sitting here that if at all opportunity permits and you can make out time please go and attend this program once in I, I think they keep on doing it annually. So once this COVID subsides and all this thing, please attend. It is worth the money. It is worth the time. It is worth the. 
so thank you so much and uh, you know it was a real privilege once again talking to so much august uh, uh, audience and uh, shivangi ma'am and uh, everyone so now questions ma'am any yes sir uh, thank you so much sir for your presence and as well as your enlightening and wonderful deliberation thank you so much for from whole team of bbd itm participants there is one announcement if you want to ask anything you can put your questions in a chat box or you can simply unmute yourself and ask directly to our resource person aditi amit kindly help out yes, sir Is okay, there any question in the chat box? No, ma'am. Right now there is no question. Sir, uh, am I audible? Yes, yes ma'am. Ah, uh, myself Jagruti Gupta from Department of Commerce, Shahjahanpur. I have a question regarding uh, your story. Is very inspiring, sir. How? Uh, what is the uh, a uh, source of motivation at uh, that you learn at every stage so share some secrets of your motivation secrets of my motivation secrets of my motivation is myself because motivation is an inside job uh, what's your name beta pragya pragya mishra no who asked me this question jagruti gupta jagruti yo oh, jagruti naam bhi jagu jagruti jagruti very good so jagruti motivation you know what i intentionally do is i at times uh, make find some time to read some self development books on a, as regularly as i can may not be for hours but at least some time and uh, uh, you know confine uh, try to surround yourself with all positive aura and positive this thing and uh, it is not that you know the world is same for uh, everyone uh, it is it, it it keeps on zindagi aisi hai it keeps on throwing challenge to you know all of us so to thrive in that challenge we need to stay strong strong and uh, to stay motivated as i told you yeah uh, watching some good content on some self development books self development cds and all these things help 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 uh, help a lot yeah thank you jagruti for your anything correct could i answer your question jagruti yes sir yes sir very well asked and kudos to your uh, you sir and uh, thank you shivangi ma'am for such a wonderful session and such a wonderful resource person we have really we are envious to have you sir thank you so uh, sir uh, there is one question in the chat box professor kiran kakde ma'am want to ask how new education policy will help to fill the gap between academia and corporate in future see to be very honest i have not in detail uh, gone through the new education policy i am i am confessing that but then i am sure that uh, that uh, you know that uh, government is finding uh, because honorable chairman of aict is also dr anil sasrabude and all the you know they 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 find that there is a there is there is there is lag there is gap so they must have put some uh, you know certain uh, 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 certain uh, clauses and points to that which tries to bridge the gap like you know they they with more emphasis on consulting with uh, industries uh, faculty must consult with industry more mdp even lot of mdps now even aict is conducting to enlighten the faculty that they, they should, uh, instead of being a armchair researcher uh, it is high time that uh, we collaborate more with the industry and things like that uh, sir another question from dr saroj bala ma'am Ma'am, want to ask how we get enrolled for PhD in foreign with a scholarship? Yeah, I will suggest her uh, to get in touch with an, one lady who is a Facebook friend of mine. I don't know her personally. One uh, doctor, one Nikita Dedia. Somebody is there. You will easily find her on Facebook. 
or uh, some other source will be uh, you know uh, because she keeps on guiding uh, students and people who are who want to have some kind of foreign education with scholarship uh, and things like that or otherwise we need to take all these uh, you know tests uh, different uh, gres and uh, different so another question from virat bhambi so Sir, want to ask how to find inspiration to learn in this time when all education system is falling. Education system is falling. Uh, will uh, I don't know how far I should agree to that because I really you know uh, find that this is the time when many uh, we have really found uh, some time to reflect. And to update, as I told you in the, during my talk, also that I am myself pursuing a course in digital marketing. So this is a time, you know, because it is otherwise. Uh, and uh, many guys who were uh, uh, working for corporate and they have seen some cut in their salary, on some of them have lost their jobs. They are using their. Uh, they want to utilize this time in updating themselves because education has uh, not stopped with, within our constraints. I understand that. Nothing can replace one-on-one -on -one, uh, lecture and interaction and all, but then it is on, very much on. Uh, so we can either look at it with uh, disappointment that uh, this is all falling, or we can look at it at, because <laughs> we, it, uh, irrespective of how we look at it, the situation remains. So it is. this is not in our control, but reaction is in our control. So I looked at, uh, look at it more as an opportunity for me for my other faculty colleagues to upgrade themselves and also you know, it is not falling apart per se because every day there is opportunity of attending good workshops online. One of them is in front of like the current one that we are attending. Sir, similar question asked by Professor Amit Pravat, sir. Sir, want to ask how we get enrolled for PhD in foreign with scholarship? Please specify specifically with US and UK only. I, I really am. I'm not very up to date on that. I'm okay. not very up to date. I'm sorry. Shivangi, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma please. <clears throat> Good afternoon, sir. Very nice session indeed. It was really engrossing and with uh, a very uh, apt information, interesting information. I personally feel that this is the time for knowledge economy. But what about the real economy? See, I, under, I understand that the past two years of unforeseen corona crisis and the, the times we are facing right now, uh, it's the time to enrich our uh, intellectual capital and go about learning a lot. Most of us are doing the same. Uh, I mean, it's nice to hear that you also pursuing something and each one of us are doing the same. Uh, but what about the real economy? You know, ultimately our needs are rising because of the uh, unforeseen situation. You never know when you require a lot of money to be hospitalized, to be medicated, and to be running around managing your survival. So what about the real uh, financial economy? What do you foresee for it uh, like during the pandemic time and how to manage uh, the country's uh, state of uh, economy? Well. Now, this is a really a question which can uh, which can trigger many discussions. Uh, see, this uh, economy thing, it depends. You know, there are, uh, because economy encompasses everything, service industry, IT industry, automobile industry, hospitality industry, hotel, tourism industry, everything. So there are, most of the sectors have been adversely, adversely affected, no doubt. But some companies which are into, uh, you know, healthcare and things like that, or say medication, like uh, they keep they get all, and all such uh, hygienic products, and then also IT industry, these these uh, companies like Google, Amazon, and then Flipkart and all. There there are gainers also, so there are gainers and losers, and uh, even I track this automobile market, car market, at least in India, has not taken a very big hit. The worst hit sector is hotel and hospitality. And of course, to some extent, uh, some of the seats in academic institutes also went vacant last year because people were taken aback. So we need to really take a stock of the situation because some sectors in the economy are uh, also getting benefited. 
So overall GDP and all gross domestic, uh, you know, is how much it is getting impacted or how much the overall economy is getting impacted. This uh, only the time, uh, you know, to come, we'll say, because we don't find the uh, economy shrinking very much in terms of overall economy. Because as some sectors have shrunk, some sectors have grown. You know, so this is this will counterbalance each other's. And uh, recently, I, I bumped into a uh, you know kind of very good speech from Ugandan uh, president on this uh, COVID, wherein he has uh, drawn a very nice comparison between COVID scenario and a war scenario. Only thing is, in war, you have got enemies uh, which who are visible and who can bombard you, so you have to keep hiding inside your bunkers and all. Or uh, yeah, at that time, you forget about your business and your shop. But in this case, the enemy is invisible. And we are, it's a warlike situation, actually. So, I mean, definitely uh, it will have, uh, will have its impact felt. But uh, human beings, you know, how we as a race, we have been uh, surviving for so many millions of years because that resilience, built-in resilience is there. Not only in you and me, it is there in the economy as well. Indian economy at the, is also very, has a lot of resilience. So it can withstand a lot of shocks and survive. So in the good note, let us hope because uh, it is yet uh, too premature to put a deadline to the end of the end of this situation. Nobody can put. So only the time, let the time unfold. If whatever I say will be uh, more of a, a wishful thinking and projection rather than yeah, there is some impact on this one. Undoubtedly, nobody can deny that. Uh, thank you. Uh, as we see that many uh, people are losing their livelihood uh, on a large scale. And that too, people uh, with uh, good, well-established, in well-established positions. I mean, leave apart the government sector in India, wherein you secure with your job. But where private sector is concerned, there are ample of people who have lost their livelihood. And that has developed a lot of turmoil in their psyche. I mean, uh, some of them uh, have even taken the worst step of their life if possible. So, you know, uh, with this kind of a situation, when we talk of the industrial development and uh, uh, we talk of the various industrial revolutions, uh, do we see any kind of a revolution with respect to the industrial mindset in this uh, regard? Because ultimately, it is the human resource that runs the industry. The robots, the technology can never overpower the human intellect. So ultimately, uh, like if we simply, if we simply uh, bank on totally the technological development or uh, or the AI. So, I mean, uh, uh, does it really seem to be uh, having a mental breakdown for the human being? See, ma'am, uh, Dr. Manisha, no? Yes, yes. This, uh, this uh, COVID, this pandemic and uh, this situation that we are in today is very, very unforeseen and sudden, and no pandemic is uh, foreseen or no for that matter, turmoil or any such event is uh, foreseen. So the only difference is when a volcano erupts, a particular city or particular you know nearby place gets drowned and at times eradicated. Uh, you know, this has hit the entire globe uh, at a time. So, and people are fighting, you know, on different front. Some are fighting on uh, economic front as well, as you rightly said, that many uh, private jobs have been lost. There have been salary cuts <clears throat> and things like that. So, but then as I told you that uh, no matter how much research one does or how much one uh, tries, the it will, it has impacted, it has impacted and that's our, that is need of the hour, but then committing extreme step as you indicated or getting totally, you know, disgusted is not the right part. 
one has to keep like uh, we say, uh, say na, that keep hoping against hope or there is light of the there is always light at the end of a tunnel or the darkest hour precedes the night subo aati hai raat jaati hai waqt chalta hai rukta like this you know we need to flow with we all are in the same boat the whole world is in the same boat so uh, you know uh, this i will call it uh, a very a weak state you know if somebody uh, finds a permanent solution to a temporary problem no matter it is it is lingering is testing our patients but what lingering any virus which has come in the past also we still catch spanish flu we still have sars we still have flu they all we, we only the ferocity of this virus because it is new mutating and all it is more but it may be there now rest of the you know even 200 years down the line some people will catch it because it is there and some will die but uh, currently it has caught us on the wrong foot because suddenly it arrived out of nowhere bolt from the blue uh, but we have to fight back that's that's life we have to fight back we cannot we cannot give up now one should not thank you and one solace is that only you not uh, it, it has it has it has challenged the entire humanity it is not race based or country based or gender based or uh, whatever it is you know it is entire humanity age entire humanity is in its grip and we will come out of it believe me we will come out of it only thing is it is matter of uh, you know testing our patience and our resilience our perseverance thank you so much sir for you, sir. wonderful deliberation and properly handling the queries of the participant i can see the chat box is fully floated with uh, comments like wonderful session great session insightful lecture wonderful deliberation excellent completely floated with a positive compliment for you from the side of participant thank you once again sir now i would like to request mansi mohanan to give a formal vote of thanks to our resource person of the day okay thank you ma'am develop an attitude of gratitude and give thanks for everything that happens to you knowing that every step forward is a step towards achieving something bigger and better than your situation today my words are not enough to express the gratitude on behalf of bbd itm it's a great privilege to thank to all the dignitaries for sharing their graceful words with us in today's meeting i would like to thank our resource person professor dr tapas kumar chatiji sir who graced us with his thought provoking address set a perfect platform you have explained in such a nice way the concepts and the queries of the participants sir i want to tell you that everything i have read about you i have found you in the same way i hope this fruitful session will add value to the participants life and they can apply it to their potential goal thank you so much sir for such a fruitful session i would like to thank our respected chief patron mrs alka das gupta ma'am and our respected patron professor dr bhavesh kumar chauhan sir and my heartful thanks goes to dr shivangi tiwari ma'am without whom this fdp would have not been possible thank you ma'am for all the words of wisdom that radiated a source of energy within us Manji, we will ever remain in between uh, you are missing our beloved hod sir professor manish kumar sir without his support his continuous follow up this fdp fdp is not going to be possible so thank you so much once again manish sir okay thank you so much uh, manish sir um mm, organizing coordinators we feel proud and thank you for making us feel happy with your present to this function event and event of this dimension cannot happen overnight the wheels start rolling weeks in advance we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated student coordinators like aditi amit manchi mohanan 
मिताली केशवानी निमिष गुप्ता एंड ऋतिक गुप्ता लास्ट विथ नॉट द लीस्ट आई थैंक ऑल दी पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर शोइंग देयर इंटरेस्ट इन दिस फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू वाइंड अप एंड एंड हैव अ स्मॉल रिक्वेस्ट विथ एवरीबडी we have an opportunity in this pandemic to do something extraordinary let's create a world of kindness love for each other where caste religion class doesn't really matter over to you ma'am ah uh, thank you so much mansi thank you so much once again professor tapas ke chatterjee sir for taking a time for us and for this wonderful deliberation and thank you so much dear participants tomorrow again at the same time on the same platform for day 2 for day 2 we have professor karunesh kumar saxena sir director iqac ml sukhadia university jodhpur sir is going to give his deliberation on emotional intelligence so be active and attentive participant in between there is one another announcement we are sharing feedback link to you and after this on the basis of feedback link we will sharing you the assignment assignment is going to share with only those participant who had filled the this feedback form there is no link sharing in whatsapp group or any other place so thank you be attentive and be regular thank you so much again sir well thank you everyone thank you shivani hod sir hod sir with, with your permission can we wind up the session yes you can wind up okay thank you once again everyone thank you